Welcome to Jackie's Craft Table. Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to review some products that Arteza has kindly sent to me. First up is this watercolor pad. It's 100% cotton. I'm going to pull one out and cut it down to card size. They also sent me a set of their watercolor pencils, and this is the 72 set. I absolutely love watercolor pencils. It is such a fun medium to work with. It comes packaged in a nice tin, and it has three beautiful trays of pencils. And just look at all of these beautiful colors. If you want to give watercolors a try, I think watercolor pencils is a great place to start because it does give you a little more control with your watercoloring. I created a swatch sheet for these colors because I do like to get a good look at the colors before I start using them. My boxes are a little small, but I wanted to get them all on one sheet. And so I scribbled out the color and I'm just pulling it out with my watercolor brush. Kind of messy, but it's still beautiful and fun to do. And I will have this chart available for you over on my blog. Now that I know what all of these beautiful colors look like, I'm going to start my card project. I have this fun stamp set from Hello Bluebird, and it's called Pumpkin Time. I just fell in love with this little fox and his wheelbarrow of pumpkins, as well as the sentiments from this stamp set. And I'll show you the sentiment I chose to use a little bit later. But let's stamp up this fox onto a piece of Arteza watercolor paper. I'm using some VersaFine Onyx Black ink because it's a great ink if you're going to watercolor. It's waterproof and it stamps out nice and dark. This paper is textured, so I had to stamp it up a few times. I also went ahead and stamped out a bunch of leaves and I'm going to be using the coordinating dies on these images. So I'm using these watercolor pencils just the same as I would use my colored pencils. I'm putting down my lightest color first, and I'm going to work in layers. I'm putting down lots of pigment. Now I'm going in with my second darkest color. I will have all of the colors that I listed over on my blog. And next I'm going to go in with my darkest color. So I'm putting in all of my shadows. I used the colors pumpkin, blood orange, and cinnamon on this fox. I'm using a gray colored pencil to put shadows on the tip of his tail and under his chin. And now for his cute little jacket and his scarf. The more pigment that you put down, the creamier the watercolor paint is going to be when you activate it with the water. So I like to do lots of layers and lots of pigment on this image. I'm adding some shadows to his jacket as well as his scarf with a dark gray colored pencil. You can add more color later once your painting dries, or you could use the tip to tip method where you use your wet paintbrush to pull the pigment right off your colored pencil and add it to your painting. But I find it easiest just to put in all of your shadows while you're coloring. These watercolor pencils are really nice because you can just use them as colored pencils. If you didn't want to activate the pigment with water, your project looks complete. This looks really cute the way it is. I put a lot of detail work into the fox, so the pumpkins I'm coloring really simply with just two watercolor pencils. I'm using the pumpkin color and the blood orange color, and then a green for the stem. And I had fun coloring in this little mouse. I put down a little bit of pink watercolor pencil on his ear, as well as the foxes. Just a cute detail. And then I just used one gray pencil on the rest of him. The leaves I'm going to do multicolored, of course, because they're fall time leaves. So I'm just putting little patches of different colors on these leaves. And now on to the really fun part, the painting, where you get to activate all of these gorgeous colors. I'm using an Arteza aqua brush. They have a whole line of these aqua brushes. I love these kind of brushes because you just put water in the barrel and you don't have to have any water cups on your desk. It's also great for taking on the go. 
When you begin to paint, make sure you start in the lightest areas and pull the pigment into the darker colors. Otherwise, you won't preserve your highlighted areas. It will just be all dark. So as you can see, I'm starting at the top of his head and pulling the orange pigment into the red and then into the brown. I'm also moving from section to section so that I don't have any paint bleeding into different colors. So I started with the fox and now I'm moving on to the wheelbarrow. Because if I were to start painting his coat, I might have the coat color bleeding with the orange of the fox. I'm doing some tip to tip coloring here because I wanted to add a little more of a shadow on my wheelbarrow. So I'm using the aqua brush to pull the pigment right off the tip of the watercolor pencil. I'm really enjoying using these watercolor pencils. They just melt out beautifully with the water. I put my painting aside to dry because I don't want to die cut that while it's still wet because it could tear the paper. And I'm going to do some ink blending. I have this Delicata Gold ink that I'm using, as well as some Tattered Rose Distress Oxide. And I just want a soft blend between these two colors. I'm using a die to cut an oval frame out of this dark chocolate cardstock. This will be a nice focal point for the little scene I'm going to create. I decided that the scene needs some grass, so I die cut some of the watercolor paper with one of my grass die cuts. And now I'm just using some green watercolor pencils to color it in. Now I can activate the pigment with my water brush, and it's so fun seeing this pigment just brighten and come to life. I don't want to have a smooth blend on this. I want it to look kind of choppy. Once my grass is dry, I'm going to adhere this with some liquid glue on the bottom of my scene. I also blended in some purple distress oxide at the top of my scene to make it look more like an October sky. It just adds a lot to this little scene. I'm going to prop up my fox with some foam squares. I need to cut some of them down to size because I want this piece completely covered. And now for my sentiment. One of the reasons I purchased this stamp set was because of this beautiful sentiment. It says, I'm so glad I live in a world where there are Octobers. And it was penned by one of my favorite authors, L.M. Montgomery. She wrote the Anne of Green Gable books as well as many other books. I've read absolutely all of them, except for some of her short story collections. I'm not overly fond of short stories, but I do love all of her novels. Have any of you read her books? Over on my blog, I've listed some of my very favorites, so check it out if you're interested. Anyway, once I saw that sentiment, I knew I had to get this stamp set for my stash. I embossed the sentiment with my white alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. And I'm going to make that into a banner. So I'm just fishtailing one of the ends. I'm going to display the sentiment prominently on my car just because I love it so much. I put some foam tape behind my frame. And as you can see, I decided to use an orange frame instead of the brown. However, I did cut out a little frame to go around the opening. I'm using a piece of foam tape as well as some liquid glue to adhere this onto the front of my card. I will trim off the excess with my long sharp scissors. And then I realized I forgot to put my frame around the window. So I carefully peel that up. Fortunately, it hadn't dried yet. I'm going to glue this around the opening. I think this is a really cute touch to the card. And I can quickly add my sentiment once again. Now I can peel off the release paper behind my fox image and put him in the window. My nails are so short, I struggle getting the release paper off. But eventually I get there. Eventually. I think the purple ink added a lot to make this look more like an October themed card. And now I can add my little mouse and I'm going to sit him on the pumpkin. I put a teeny tiny piece of foam tape behind the leaf and I want it to look as though the mouse is trying to catch it. That looks so cute. 
I didn't end up using all of the leaves that I colored in, but I can keep them for another project. But I just want to glue some of the leaves around the card. I'm going to adhere it to a white card base using some more of my Jackie's Craft Table liquid glue, which I sell over on my Etsy shop if you're interested. And now for the inside of the card. I had so many leftover pieces, I thought I wanted to use some on the inside. So I used another brown strip of cardstock, and I can just adhere some of the little die cuts. I had so much fun using the Arteza watercolor markers, and I highly recommend them. They're just beautiful. They gave me a coupon code if you're interested in purchasing any of these products. It's Jackie's Craft Table 3, and it's the numeral 3. You can use that code to get 10% off your purchase. And it's good through November 25th of 2019. Thank you, my crafty friends, for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope you'll give watercolor pencils a try. I really love them. Let me know if you do. I hope you all have a lovely October. Bye.